get that thing out of here. With some strong language now on BBC Two, we've a week's worth of comedy. Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Ed Byrne, Kerry Godleman and Chris Washington, Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. <laughs> we start with a round called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? on the board of six categories. Chris, which category would you like? Um, politics, please. Politics it is. The answer is three billion. What is the question? Is it? How many nectar points to a pound? <laughs> Is it in 1980, my dad bought a three-bedroom flat in Lewisham for £6.50? What's it worth now? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what does Southern Rail consider to be the maximum capacity for a six-carriage train? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many vegans actually used to be an egg? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it, uh, how many children has Boris Johnson got? <laughs> <laughs> is it on a scale of one to ten, how cross is the Queen? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, what's as good as any other number to slap on the side of a bus? <laughs> <laughs> is it, how much could you win if you put a fiver on the Liberal Democrats to win the general election? <laughs> Is it? What's the same number as the number in this envelope? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how much can Roman Abramovich do on contactless? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how much does Caitlyn Jenner spend a week on Avon? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what's the same number as in this envelope? <laughs> Is it... is it how many GPs we'll get each in the Tory manifesto? <laughs> <laughs> is it...? <laughs> <laughs> is it in what year will we leave the EU? <laughs> <laughs> it's how many times has Meghan Markle said the phrase, no, we're not spending Christmas with your family? <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know the correct answer? I think it is how much expenditure is detailed in the Tory manifesto. Yeah, that'll, that'll do fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Yes, the question I was looking for was how much extra money in day-to-day -day government spending has the Conservative Party pledged in its election manifesto, which was launched this week. This is news that the Conservatives have outlined cautious spending plans of just an additional £2.9 billion per year. This is given to £1 for every £28 pledged by the Labour Party, who claim that their manifesto will cost £83 billion, making it the most expensive in British political history. So what do we think of the different spending plans? One well, of them is definitely higher than the other. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's my expert analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Although you have to credit, I mean, 2.9 billion and 2 billion is going on potholes. Mm. Uh, yeah. It does feel that. Like, <laughs> and then the other yeah. 900 million are building 40 hospitals. Uh, so, How much yeah. is going on potholes? Uh, uh, 2 billion. Uh, uh, two billion. Two what billion. are they filling them with? Caviar? <laughs> <laughs> They haven't, actually, they haven't actually said they're filling them. They said they're spending two billion on potholes. I'm yeah. <laughs> they're going to make them some more, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which particular Conservative manifesto pledge has drawn criticism? They said that they promised 50,000 more nurses, but they didn't say that that includes just holding on to 18 or 19,000 nurses they already have. Yes. I think all that's happening is it's a Christmas election and they're re-gifting. That's, here's the 19,000 nurses you already had. It's like when my mum wraps up the shower gel because someone's popped round and she didn't know they were coming. <laughs> oh, you know that was in your bathroom, Mum. Oh, oh, yeah. I, oh I, think, I, I think I already had these nurses. Uh, <laughs> I'm not anti the fake nurse. They're calling them fake nurses, aren't they? 
But that's okay. like, you could have, like, placebo nurses. Like, they use placebos anyway in medicine, don't they? So have a, have a placebo nurse for the hypochondriacs. <laughs> <laughs> and then make them wear those little Ann Summers nurses out there. You know what? I'm in now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they're doing more GP appointments, cos I had to give an out-of-hours urine sample the other week, and the spring on that letterbox was pretty painful. <laughs> <laughs> One of the health policies I find uh, quite morbid is that they're going to introduce... The Tories are going to introduce free parking, free hospital parking, for the terminally ill. <laughs> which is a really... That's yeah. quite the Christmas oh, bonus, isn't so it? <laughs> it's a great way for doctors to break bad news now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's the prognosis, doctor? Well, I have good news and bad news. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What on the one hand, yeah. your parking will be free from now on. <laughs> Why was Labour's £83 billion manifesto criticised? Because it's £83 billion. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of... All the numbers are made up and nobody ever has to stick to the promises anyway. In which yeah. case, you think, why don't you just promise stuff which is, you know, more fun, like, you know, like a, I don't know, volcano in Lincolnshire or something. <laughs> 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 Entirely unrealistic. OK, but, I mean, for the you people know, of Lincolnshire, what... that's not a good promise. Uh, sure. I think the people of Lincolnshire would find it pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying they wouldn't find it exciting. Uh, <laughs> but there's good yeah. exciting and bad exciting. In the... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what setbacks did Labour's campaign suffer this week, Tom? The chief rabbi said that the, the Labour Party were anti-Semitic and that it, it, anti-Semitism didn't fit within British values, which Jeremy Corbyn um, agrees with but then refused to apologise, which is mad, because one of the most clear-cut British values is you apologise for everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. People walk into you, you apologise to them. Yeah, yeah. Someone pours custard on your trousers. You say, no, I'm so sorry, my... <laughs> <laughs> my crutch was in the way of the jug. You know, I mean, what... <laughs> it's, the, it's the simplest British value. It's quite amazing that they've managed to achieve how Labour in this campaign has become the racist party. It's quite an achievement, really. It's like being interviewed by Piers Morgan and it turns out you're the twat. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead easy, though, isn't it? It's dead easy to get to say... You know, we didn't want to say sorry, but if you, you can say sorry about meaning so. You can just... All you needed to do was just go... <sighs> soz. <laughs> <laughs> Works. He said it, and that is exactly what the Jewish community are, are hoping yeah. out for. Right. Uh, <laughs> just, Rachel Ryan, if you just say soz, <laughs> uh, then we were happy to put all this behind us. Uh, so all we ask for is a clear soz, <laughs> and, and we're ready to move on. Did you see that interview on Andrew Neil? Yeah. Man, that couldn't have gone worse if he'd come out and said he didn't sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd love to apologise to the Jewish community, but I was in Pete's Express and woke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remembered quite clearly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what issue did Jeremy Corbyn finally make his position clear, though? Brexit. Brexit, yes, he did. He has finally said, with clarity, that he is neutral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird to meet anyone who has no opinion on Brexit. Yeah. Let alone find somebody who's leader of a political party. Do you know of anything else? Don't even... I've got three GCSEs. Who cares what I think about Brexit? <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's a lot of, like, comedians who are experts on it now, do you know what I mean? And people, cos they've got a microphone, want to talk about it. I just think we're about three months away now from bingo callers thinking they've got the right just cos they've got a microphone. You'll hear it. <laughs> I'm telling you now, seriously, <laughs> gala bingo, three months' time, it'll be 5 and 0, Article 50, send them back. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you're right, it is fine to not know how you feel about... Like, I don't... I voted Remain, right? And I don't mind telling you that here on What The Week. I didn't tell them that on tour in Lincoln. But, um... <laughs> But even now, I don't... I just don't know anymore. Can we stay in the EU? Can we? Can you stay at the garden party after you've taken a shit in the punch? I don't know... <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> it works. It divides the three leaders up well, doesn't it? So, if Corbyn yeah. is neutral, mm. Swinson is in reverse, and, and Boris is driving without insurance. Mm. That's how <laughs> it well, Boris's but... policy is basically we should stop worrying about the negative consequences of Brexit and get on with suffering the negative consequences. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, what did Liberal Democrat leader Joe Swinson say she enjoyed at university? Not paying tuition fees. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was cannabis, wasn't it? It was cannabis, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a good move, because she's trying to get the uh, cannabis smokers' vote, and they're well-known for... 
uh, leaving the house and remembering to do things, so... <laughs> People are shocked by this. Like, it's not the cannabis smokers you have to be worried about. It's the ones that are in the student choir. They were the weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's this thing. Now that she said I did some cannabis university, <laughs> everyone in the yeah. lib is permanently toked well, off no. their tits. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing for it to be legalized. They and have in the latest manifesto, the, interesting to interesting be legalized and yeah. also have the potency of it limited under a project they call uh, Operation Buzzkill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, well, you'd have to go to your mum and dad to get. Can yeah. I have some cannabis? All right. Uh, you can have this amount of cannabis. I oh. <laughs> have you done your homework? Oh, <laughs> this is the least fun thing in the world. <laughs> One thing that would pay for the Labour manifesto would be if they legalised cannabis and then doubled the tax on chocolate hobnobs. <laughs> <laughs> that would pay for everything. Oh, I had it in, uh, in Amsterdam, uh, cannabis, and uh, I was actually sick on the top of my own head. Now you might be thinking, how is that possible? Yeah. Let me tell you. I had it, right. <laughs> yeah. So I had this, and I had a little bit too much. I went overboard. Then I went for a little lie down. I think they call it pulling a whitey, I've heard. Right, anyway. <laughs> Went for a little lie down and the room started spinning and then a projectile vomited with such force that I sat up at the same time. So if you can imagine... Okay, at the end of that round, uh, the voice of Andrew Hugh Milton! <laughs> Now, we play a round called Have I Got Jews For You? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I told you it wouldn't work. I told you they would turn on me. Uh, don't you sugar to me. Uh, <laughs> this game involves Milton and Chris, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is diet. Chris. <laughs> so I'm about um, half a stone away from changing my Facebook picture to a Ferrari or a football badge. <laughs> <laughs> I had what should have been a bit of a wake-up call recently as well. I was driving home from a gig and I bought a kebab uh, just for me, no-one else, and I uh, put it on the passenger seat of my car when I was driving and that, and that beeper started going off. You know the one that's designed to go off when it detects the weight of a fucking person? That one. <laughs> you know you've got serious issues when you have to put a seatbelt around your kebab when you're driving. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, I don't get that food guilt anymore. Now, food guilt is that little voice in your head which has a go at you when you're eating too much junk food and fast food and takeaway. It just pops up and it just goes, stop being such a fat bastard. It disappears, <laughs> right? Everyone's had that voice. I don't get that voice anymore, it's gone. But not only has it gone, it's been replaced with a voice which reasons with me on everything and comes up with fantastic excuses instead. So a few weeks ago, I had three Indian takeaways in a week, which sounds like quite a lot, but then this little voice in me, I just popped up and it just went... Yeah, but Chris... Have you lived in India? <laughs> Just for your tea, don't worry about it, fat lad. Crack on, chicken, boona, cheesy chips, six of them, fried nuggets and four cans of Rubicon. They're at it all the time in Mumbai, come on. Anyway. <laughs> and then I thought, right, dieting's not for me, so I'll try a bit of exercise. So I thought, right, I'll ease myself in, I'll not go overboard, you know what I mean? So I'll just do 10K for my first run. That was the plan, right, because... I don't know if you noticed this, but I've sponsored people on Facebook well fatter than me doing 10K runs, so I presumed it'd be dead easy, right? <laughs> So I thought, 10K this week, half marathon next week, full marathon a week after, yeah? <laughs> and, um, anyway, I've got all my running gear on, right? And I've downloaded one of these apps on my phone what tells you how far you've gone and how long it's took you, right? I've set off running from our house with my phone in my hand. I had to stop cos I had a stitch. I looked down at my phone and I was still connected to my home Wi-Fi, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris Washington. That leaves us with Milton. Let's see what topic you have. The topic is communication. <laughs> Not a good day today. No one turned up to the first meeting of my sarcasm club, despite loads of people saying how much they were looking forward to it. <laughs> 
Do you ever do that thing when you're on the phone? You put it down. No, you put it down. <laughs> no, you put it down. Listen, you're a qualified vet and it's an old dog. <laughs> Do you know, it was so cold the other day in the city of Chester, when I ordered a taxi, I ended up in Chichester. <laughs> the only bright point of the journey was seeing a car going the other way with a seatbelt round a kebab. <laughs> My wife and I, we argue sometimes. You've left the lid up, you've left the lid up. Yes, but what if it's a man, the next person to use the toilet? It's a pedal bin, it's a pedal bin. <laughs> <laughs> it was her birthday recently. I took her to an orchard in Somerset. We stood for about 20 minutes. Not the Apple Watch she wanted. <laughs> Thank you very much, Roger. Point there for Chris. Go on, Dan. Our next item is called Picture of the Week. I showed the panel topical image and asked them to tell me what is happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> Blimey, Camilla looks different with her kit off, doesn't yeah. she? <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't know what Prince Charles is doing, but there appears to be a queue forming behind him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> is it an anus horribilis? <laughs> Is he saying, look at that cock, the other bloke, not Charles? <laughs> <laughs> Is it an episode of Snog Maori Avoid? Is it Man Who Lives Distant from Civilization Meets Maori? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe this is a still from the live action reboot of Moana. <laughs> It does look exactly like Noel Edmonds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have the correct answer? Yes. Prince Charles meeting a man with a tattooed arse. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Prince, Prince Charles on a tour of New Zealand, I'm assuming. Absolutely right. Thank you very much. You're there. Very good. Well. <clears throat> yes, of course, this is Prince Charles on a state visit to New Zealand. The visit was overshadowed by the ongoing PR disaster that is Prince Andrew. Charles flew back this week amid newspaper speculation that he would be reading Prince Andrew the Riot Act. How will Prince Andrew be celebrating his 60th birthday? Will it be at the Pizza Express in Woking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Mm -hmm. uh. I am extremely impressed that the Queen cancelled his birthday because yeah. I have threatened to cancel my kids' birthdays, but that's a hard thing to see through. But she has to take a strong line, and what she'll see is he'll behave better from here on in. <laughs> now that she's put her foot down and cancelled his birthday party, and she doesn't care, she's lost the deposit. To go ape. Uh, <laughs> how has the scandal affected Prince Andrew's charity work? Gone no. bad. Yeah. Yeah, he has been offered the face of sure antiperspirant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been a bunch of things he's had to take a step back from Prince Andrew. The Canadian Canoe Museum. Yep. Yes. Means he's now up Shit Creek without a paddle or a uh, canoe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I capsized in a canoe once. Did you? Yeah, on PGL. Mm. And PGL? Yeah. 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 No. It's like a residential like, like, trip. Yeah, yeah, residential trip yeah. with the school. It's you do abseiling, canoeing, yeah. snogging, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I Where did you canoe? Down the Ardesh or somewhere? No, it was in Kent. Oh, no. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I just went on a slightly posher. <laughs> <laughs> which, which wine producing region was you <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, no, 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 I'm getting earthy toads. Oh. I'm getting notes of coffee and arabica. Mmm, mm. it's very good. Hew, hew, another one for fours? Mm. OK, I will. Oh, <laughs> let me sniff these apricots. Do keep paddling. <laughs> Today we had a wonderful day on the PGL. <laughs> Jeeves paddled me from one end of the river. To... <laughs> okay, then walk it to me disappearing from the streets of London. Potholes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uber. Uber. Oh, Uber's right. lost their oh. licence. TfL have taken their licence. Yeah, it's on. There's an appeal. Is Uber Eats still going? Yeah, because I don't think they're as worried about. So why don't you just get Uber Eats and rock up by the driver? You could go where uh, you need to go on the back of a moped, to take the pizza. Do, you, yeah, you, you can, still get there. If yeah, you yeah. went to a local burger place, rang an Uber Eats, and then yeah. accompanied your food home. Yeah. Uh, you can still get where you need to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or yes, or you tell me where you are, and then I order you from Uber Eats. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't> get around. <laughs> <laughs> I also I wondered how it was possible to fake your identity. And then I then I realised that if you're if you're facing the wrong way, no one has a clue who you are. <laughs> I love how you had to actually do that. Yeah, <laughs> I, you could have said it to us. We would have gathered I'm the sorry, I'm not listening to your conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and you've only just tuned in. You're watching The Voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, will I am? Are you coming? Back? Yeah, no, no. They said that they're going to introduce face recognition technology. That blows my mind, that. Because my phone's got face recognition technology, which already makes it better than my nan. <laughs> oh, God, I have to put my hair up. She thinks I'm the new carer. Come on. <laughs> Moving on, uh, final thing in this round. Which piece of comedy history is up for sale? Is it your Megabus fleet? <laughs> Is it Emu and Orville? Emu and Orville are both for sale in an auction this Christmas. Which seems very insensitive to me, cos at an auction you have to stick your hand up and I think that's going to bring back... If you like, is that a bit? No! <laughs> yeah. I love now, Orville. You know, but honestly, well, there's a certain amount of warmth for Emu. How can you prefer Emu? It's a mm. sex pest. <laughs> I mean, I prefer uh -huh. Emu because basically oh, no. was... <laughs> This is obviously not the one that's... <laughs> uh, You're a shit Emu. Uh, <laughs> you like a cheap version That's of like this. the equivalent of the Disney characters on an ice cream van. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, like, Emu... Basically, Rod Hull was a man who couldn't do ventriloquism. We think about it. <laughs> and so just distracted everybody by attacking people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing where it said that Emu was described as Britain's most annoying bird, but I'd like to say that if you watch my Twitter timeline during this show, I think you'll find it's me. <laughs> <laughs> you think half of him really wanted to get out? I'm, I'm doing my own show here. <laughs> 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 Sinister when it goes below the desk. <laughs> it kind of made me realise how talented Rod Hull was. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, then we'll see what our panels can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to hear at the Royal Variety Show. Hello, I'm Frankie Boyle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> our next act, Mr Memory, couldn't be with us this evening. He's in the Pizza Express in Woking. <laughs> Asked me not to do any Prince Andrew jokes tonight, and I said, sure, no sweat. <laughs> <laughs> and for her next trick, the Queen will make Prince Andrew's birthday disappear. <laughs> <laughs> At this point in the evening, I'd just like to ask the members of the royal family to put their rifles away as I welcome to the stage the cast of The Lion King. <laughs> At 93 years old, I think we'll all agree it's just good to see her out the house at this time of year. Uh, give it up for Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Ginger, Baby, Sporty, Posh and the other one. Yes, it's the royal family. <laughs> Unfortunately, Prince Andrew is running late cos he's stuck in trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> well... We're now going to end this evening of royal entertainment in this magnificent theatre in the traditional way, a fly-through by the Red Arrows. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's now my privilege to introduce the rock band R.E.M. I've got a photograph of me with them years ago. That's me in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> This next act needs no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she bends, she twists, she contorts herself, but the Queen cannot get out of her obligation to attend this shit show. <laughs> <laughs> and your card is what? The Four of Clubs. <laughs> I think you're going to enjoy this, Your Majesty. Our next act is a dog act. He uses corgis because they're exactly the right shape to fit in the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the stage, Britain's premier OAP breakdancing group, Hip Hop. <laughs> no, Liz, why don't you shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a go. On lighter things to hear at a wedding or funeral. It was always Alan's dream to be buried with his wife. So this afternoon, we shot her. <laughs> All the tables are named after mine and my wife's favourite films. I know it's quite crowded over there on the human centipede, but if you all squeeze in together, you'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, thank you. No, I've had more than enough free Prosecco. <laughs> yes, I know it's traditional for the bride to have something blue. I just don't think you should have dug up Grandma. <laughs> just because he was morbidly obese doesn't mean he can't be buried with dignity. <laughs> Gary, get the forklift. <laughs> In life, he was a strong, confident and capable man. Excelled at everything he did. Apart from swimming, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> at least George died doing what he loved. Heroin. <laughs> I know it's customary as father of the bride to give my daughter away, but I'd like to try something different. And if you look on the back of today's order of service, you'll see a picture of Ethel when she was much younger. I think we'll all agree it's one for the wank bank. <laughs> Today is not a sad day. It's a celebration, because, after all, Trevor was a prick. <laughs> Right side or groom side? I don't know, I fucked them both. <laughs> Why she drove into oncoming traffic, we will never know. Perhaps Vera by name? <laughs> ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Never WhatsApp while walking, he got hit by a bus. <laughs> our own first dance because we are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's funny. No, I just realised it's just because I've never actually met a Scottish widow. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Sadly, today we all know exactly where Wally is. <laughs> And I'd like to congratulate the bride's mother on how well she looks tonight, although not as well as she'd look on my dick! My goodness. My goodness, yes, that is a lovely ring. Now, pop your trousers back on. <laughs> Does anybody else find there's a seriously inconsistent tone at this wedding or funeral? <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
Raymond was a man of many parts. None of them work, that's why he's dead. <laughs> the end of the show. This week's winners are Ed Byrne, Terry Gardner and Chris Washington. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Commiserations to Milton Jones, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. Every glorious yet stupid moment from series two. The Young Offenders streaming now on BBC iPlayer. And what animal were you in a past life? She's taking a test to find out. The Gemma Collins podcast, hear it from BBC Sounds now. Next, it's Newsnight. The Big Unnecessary Show with... 